Hello, everyone. Welcome to Aptera Owners Club. Um, I want to do a series of videos about uh, the Alafe Motors. And one of the things I really like about Alafe is that they have been um, publishing papers about their technology and their thought process throughout the development of their motors, uh, which is in stark contrast to, say, Theranos, which has been in the um, news lately. Uh, Theranos never published any kind of um, papers or um, details about their technology, um, as it turns out, because their technology was non-existent. Um, but Alafe is, um, has been uh, writing papers about their technology uh, ever since they started development, and um, their papers are publicly available to read, and I think it's fun to go over them. And this paper is called Structural Integrity of In-Wheel Motors, and it kind of goes through their thought process of all the... Um, all the different stresses that the in-wheel motors are going to go through, they understand that there's going to be a lot of loads um, on their uh, motor. And they have thought of a bunch of things that like we have all thought about, like potholes and cornering and stuff. And then a lot of things that like I hadn't thought about, they, had th they have already thought about it. So they're talking about <clears throat> um, in both internal loads and external loads. And so they're talking about the electromagnetic force, which is the torque generated by the, um, the actual motor, the, the, act, the force of the torque acting on the motor, then thermal mechanical loads, because the thermal expansion is different throughout the, the various portions of the motor. And so that causes differential expansion and that would cause differential loads on the different parts of the um, of the motor and then talking about um, manufacturing loads during the manufacturing and assembling loads to the suspension parts and then they're talking about inertial no loads and so they talk about the, the NVH test where basically they run the car over potholes and brick roads and embedded rock and speed bumps and resonance load. okay so they have a video on that so let's watch that So that's the potholes. And then this is a brick road. So that you can tell there's a lot of uh, vibration through it. And then these are embedded rocks. And then these are speed bumps. And then this is what they call a resonance road. This is just like the kind of washboard roads that you get on a lot of dirt roads. Um, okay. So they're testing that. And then they built, um, so then, you know, they, they designed their motor with all those loads in mind. And they basically designed all these um, testing apparatuses. And they go over it in this paper. So this is a hub bearing one where basically they um, put the hub bearing design that they put in. And they have a whole other paper about hub bearings. And maybe we'll do a video on that. And they basically torque it. Uh, uh, they rock it back and forth and see how much stress they can put on the torque bearing and how much deflection they get. Because if the torque, excuse me, if the hub bearing deflects a lot, then the air gap between the stator and the, uh, and the um, permanent magnets there will disappear. And then you'll have grinding of the, um, uh, of the stator with the, um, the, the uh, permanent magnets, which would cause the, the motor to fail. So they basically have to have very little bearing deflection with high loads. Uh, that you would expect with like braking and severe cornering. This is the shock test. They drop this thing. Um, it's 100 Gs of shock. This is a vi random vibration test, and it just vibrates it randomly. And this basically um, uh, subjects the motor in a short period of time to what the lifespan of a car uh, wheel would take on. And then there's this thing called a Walt machine which I'd never heard of before, but Walt machines were developed in the 1980s to test wheel related components. So it's a well-known testing setup that basically is used to test the uh, hub, the hubs of, uh, and the braking components of a car. 
and it uh, would go through all the loads that you would expect um, the car to go through within its um, accelerated lifetime performance. Uh, not only for the bearings in the wheels, but components within the subassembly. But then they just they stuck their um, in-wheel motor into this Walt machine and tested it out. And so here's their summary. A comprehensive design and validation approach of electric motors integrated directly inside the wheels of different uh, vehicles was presented. The paper comprehensively describes and deals with the internal and external loads originating from aggressive driving, internal motor heating due to losses, and those stem from mechanical brake operation and manufacturing processes. Uh, the general design process provides a plethora of scientific contributions. And so they've looked at um, uh, the structural and fatigue analysis, bearing stiffness, um, air gap deformation evaluation, and structural optimization. Validation tests show that mechanical shocks up to 100 Gs have negligible effects on the motor functionality and the random vibration fatigue test, which represent the worst case road conditions over the entire motor lifetime, have been passed, thus validating the motor and component design. Bearing endurance tests show that the bearing is able to sustain a sufficient air bone gap at loads up to 150% of rated loads during the endurance test on the Walt machine. In addition to the bearing, the entire in-wheel motor assembly had passed these same tests. So basically, they've looked at every kind of shock and load that they would expect to see and tested them um, for the expected lifetime of an automotive wheel. And they've passed um, all those tests. So I think um, I feel very good after seeing these papers that they've been very open about what kind of loads they're testing. And then these um, papers undergo peer review by other engineers and other scientists. And they can always say, oh, you know, did you think about this kind of load or that kind of load? And it undergoes a lot of like scrutiny, public scrutiny. And so you can't hide defects um, in your design and in your engineering when you're going to submit yourself for um, public scrutiny by writing a paper about it. So that makes me feel good about the design of the motor and that it's been tested. Now, you know, nothing trumps actual testing in real world conditions, but um, they're using validated um, testing mechanisms that's used throughout the automotive industry. And so these are the same ways that wheel components are tested by um, auto manufacturers. And so, you know, I think um, auto manufacturing has a long history and the testing, um, the testing is kind of well known and well established. And so if they're using the same testing regimens, I think we can be pretty sure that um, uh, the, the in-wheel motors are uh, being tested as well as uh, regular wheels would be in a non-in-wheel motor car. So um, I think that these um, papers are quite reassuring. And um, if you have any comments, please comment below, guys.